And tell your neighbors this. Tell them, believers that forgive are unique. Now look, it's understandable that there are some things that will come in all of our lives at particular points. Somebody will do something against us. Probably, if I would inquire, some of you in here now uh, had things done to you this past week. It could have been a relative, could have been an employee, or employee, a fellow employer, employee on the job, could have been a co-worker or somebody, could have been somebody in the church. And some of you have contemplated not forgiving. Or you're in the process of convincing yourself that this is too hard and God understands. No, he doesn't. He understands that it might be too hard for you. That's why he gives you the Holy Spirit so you can forgive. See, don't, don't tell me all this stuff, jumping up and down, running the aisles, if you can't walk the walk. And some of you probably, uh, like I've been at times, maybe right now you're uptight. You're not ready to forgive. You're ready to fight. Because you don't like what's said, what's been said. You don't like what's been done. You don't like how they treated you. See, forgiving people are unique. You know why? Because forgiving people are concerned about pleasing God. Their, their concern is, I want to please God. And I know that even though this infraction that has been brought against me is atrocious, I didn't deserve it. They never should have done it to me. But I love God so much that I'm going to stay aligned with him. I'm concerned about pleasing God. Listen, also, people who, who forgive, they're unique because they don't think too highly of themselves. Tell your neighbor, I am not all that. See, a lot of times, a lot of times, people, a lot of times, people don't forgive because they think too highly of themselves. And it's like, how dare you do that to me? You could do that to that one, and you could do it to that one, but don't you dare do that to me. Pride. Pride. Somebody that forgives is unique and they understand that no matter what my level of accomplishments or achievements might be, people are going to do things to me too. Are you with me? They know these people that, that they're unique when they can forgive because they know how to go to God for healing. They know that God said forgive. God said forgive. They know they're hurting. And because they're hurting, they don't want to forgive. But God said, forgive. But I'm hurting. I don't want to forgive. But God said, forgive. This person that's unique can forgive because they know whatever pain I feel, when I forgive, God will heal it. Don't think, don't think that you're getting healed because you feel better because you pay them back. That is not healing. That's meanness. That's vindictiveness. Oh, it feels good sometimes when they got you and you say, I got them back. Let me go out and celebrate. I've been waiting for this opportunity to get them back. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes people do things and you say, it's all right, you don't pay. You will pay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. You know, that's how we do. I'm sorry, Lord. I lost it for a moment. But people say that, and, and they really mean it. See, people who forgive, they're unique because they value their fellowship with God. And they don't want anything to contaminate their prayer time. And, and what do you think you're doing anyway, going in the prayer room, getting on your knees, getting on your face, talking to God, knowing you're angry and unforgiving to somebody, what do you think God's going to do? Get up. Just get, get up. Don't even kneel. 
shut your mouth. Get up. Fix it. Are you all with me? Listen, listen. The unique people forgive. They love as the Lord says. They even love those that offended and hurt them. You hurt me. I wouldn't expect this from you, but I still love you. I have walked around for a couple of weeks crying, but I still, oh, this is hard for fake believers. If you fake, you're struggling right now. Or if you're still not strong in this area, you're struggling right now. Just tap your neighbor's hand and tell him it's going to be all right. You know what? They're unique because they understand how negatively unforgiveness can impact a life. Because the enemy wants us to walk in unforgiveness because if a person intentionally harmed us, the enemy already controlling them. And if he can make you hold unforgiveness, now he's controlling you. Don't give the enemy the control. They hurt me. I love them. I'm going to handle this. I'm going to forgive them. See, the thing that's so good about God, you may not have the strength. You don't have to have the strength. But if you lock it in your heart, Lord, you know my heart. I, I can't forgive that rascal, but I really want to. I really want to. It's in my heart. I really want to. How many know if you lock it in your heart, you get divine assistance? Somebody say hallelujah. You see, the program, they're unique because the person that can forgive understand the value of unity. And they understand that it is unity that causes us to build. One of the strategies of the enemy is to divide and conquer. So if the enemy can divide us, he can conquer us. Somebody that will hold a grudge, you don't understand unity. You, gonna, you don't even understand unity. And the person you're holding a grudge against, maybe something was manifested so God could bring a bonding there because there's something that each of you need that's in the other person. And I don't see anything in them that I need. No, you don't know all either. Anything they have, I don't want it after what they did. Let me tell you stuff. I had people do some horrible stuff to me, but I could see a lot of stuff in them that I would like to receive. Some people that harm you have more knowledge than you. Some people that harm you have more wisdom. Maybe it came about one of their, during one of their weak moments. As a pastor... I have great respect for people who can forgive. They are needed in the church. They are needed in the church. The Bible says it is impossible, but that offense is come. But woe to them from whom they come. He said, rather than to offend one of these, the least of these, my little ones, it's better to have a millstone about your neck and to be cast into the uttermost parts of the sea. And let me tell you something. I know you say, well, you don't know what people have done to me. Well, let me tell you, in the position that I hold, in the position that I hold, I had all kinds of crazy stuff done to me. It's enough done to me to make me a wild man. Something Bishop Monroe Saunders used to say, and they said it yesterday at the service. They say, welcome to this insanity. Bishop, Bishop Monroe Saunders Sr. used to say, welcome to the insanity of ministry. And he would laugh and tell them, anybody that, that walking up into this, they got to be crazy. And it's not meant in a derogatory sense. You can't just walk up into this position. You need God. Because whatever can be done against you, will be done against you. I listened to this, I've been lied on. Talk about she 
see, I've been with you. Won't talk about shows you bought. I, I, I've been all of that and a whole lot more. But right now, I hold no grudges. I learned my lesson. Lied on, cheated, talked about mistreated, rebuked, scorned, talked about sure as you're born. And more. But I don't hold it. Thank God for a tender heart. I'm not bragging, but I'm boasting in the Lord. Thank God for a kind heart. 